Adam Uze gets his first win as the Tigers stun the Swans. The Lions are feeling the heat. Does Chris Fagan have some hard calls to make? Plus, we unpack the hot starts at Frio and Carlton. This is Access All Areas, thanks to Crypto.com. Great to have your company on this Easter Monday. Damien Barrett and Matthew Lloyd are with me. Did the Easter Bunny pay you both a visit on the weekend? Uh, he was too kind to me, Nat. So <laughs> I felt, felt the best overnight. No, I ate too much chocolate. Still video. Yeah. Yeah. You, no, you don't got... like chocolate, do you? Not a massive chocolate. Oh, no. come Savory meat. <laughs> okay, well, you it, love your hot cross buns. I do, well, yeah. only the chocolate ones. No yeah. raisins for me. Uh, it was a big round of footy. It still continues today. But let's start with the Tigers because they stunned the Swans at the MCG on Easter Sunday and Lloydie, it was their pressure that was impressive because they dropped off against Port Adelaide last week but they trained it during the week, 59 tackles. Yeah, 32 tackles last week, they beat Port Adelaide but 59 they ramped it up to and it's amazing what it can do, you know it's, it's infectious, when someone starts it the next one wants to go, I thought Shea Bolton was critical in this, you know their senior players stood up big time and off the back of it they punished uh, Sydney on the turn turnover day. It was clear that they had that plan, didn't they, Lord? Knowing the way the Swans move the ball and take on those 45 degree kicks through the corridor, which has helped them set up their season very, very nicely. But they're awake up to it. The Swans seemed slightly off, but that was as much to do with Richmond making them off as, as much as it was themselves. And of course, Adam Uze's first win uh, as coach. Good scenes after the game. It was great, wasn't it? The way they included him in it. And it took the previous Richmond coach uh, 10 matches, Nat, mm. Damien Hardwick, to get his first win. So uh, contextually speaking, he's uh, he's beaten him there. So it wasn't just their pressure that was impressive. Lloydie, you loved the way that they ran and carried. I did, Nat. Sydney were beaten at their own game yesterday at the MC. Uh, Errol Goulden's been highlighted all year for his run and carry as is Isaac Heaney and those types. But Richmond beat them at their own game. There's one clip that highlights that. Nick Voston kicks it in from full back. The ball's in dispute. That is Tim Taranto and that is Ryan Mansell. And watch how this play unfolds. So the ball's in dispute. Do Sydney want to work as hard as Richmond yesterday? So again, that's Tim Taranto and that's Ryan Mansell at the top of the screen. And there's a lot of Sydney players like Brody Grundy do they want to work as hard as some of the Richmond players? So then Mansell bobs up inside forward 50. We saw Tim Taranto 100 metres back behind the play. This unfolds and Tim Taranto pops up inside forward 50, having run past five or six Sydney players, Nat. So it's amazing. Sheedy always said to me, the game is 80% above your shoulders. Mm. And I think yesterday, Richmond beat Sydney above the shoulders. So a little bit of complacency, do you think, yeah, creeping I, into the I swans? I think so. You, get ahead, you think you're going well, you listen to your publicity. Some of them are still quite young. And a hungry, young, hungry Richmond team took it to Sydney and beat them yesterday. They certainly were hungry. And they were missing a few experienced players too, Damo. No Dustin Martin. And then, of course, in defence, they're, they're missing Dylan Grimes. And it was Nick Foston who stepped up in his absence. Yeah, it was a great game, wasn't it? I mean, he was just shot highlighting what he did yesterday. He controlled this game, you know. I mean, he had to play uh, at times, as he has in the past, uh, taller than he actually mm. is. But he, he's such a good reader of the play. And it wasn't just him being one of the older, experienced players of the Richmond team yesterday that stood up. I mean, you mentioned Taranto already, Lord. Oh, Liam Baker was, was outstanding, I thought. And, and Pickett laid some good tackles at times, getting back to that point about the pressure with the tackles. Matthew Nix got hammered last week for what happened with Tom Stewart. I think John Longmire would be disappointed mm. with how they didn't get on to Nick Boston earlier. There was, I guess, a sour note to end the game with Tom Lynch limping off with a minor hamstring. That's what he said after the game. He'll obviously need to have scans today and the Tigers will come back to us in the next 24 hours, I assume, Damo, with what the latest is. But yeah. he just can't get a clear no, run can't. at it. Well, he, he doesn't do pre-seasons, does he? I think he's done one since yeah. he first got to Richmond uh, from Gold Coast Suns. And that obviously then exposes him uh, and leaves him vulnerable to these moments. There's no such thing as a minor hamstring, and, and not for someone who's had the injury problems he's got. So while they get their win and they get it on the back of their good form from their older players, he's not going to be part of, uh, you'd think, coming up. So while we had a thriller at the MCG on Easter Sunday across town at Marvel Stadium yesterday, it was less of a thriller. It was... Difficult to watch at times, but the Bulldogs handing the Eagles uh, absolute shellacking. And Damo, I want to ask you about West Coast because Adam Simpson, they came out last season at the end of the year saying he's our man for this rebuild. Hmm. He's still contracted until the end of 2025. Yeah. What they're putting out on the park is 
it's not good to watch. We thought 2023 was bad, didn't we? Like, there's every chance 2024 will be worse. And, and that takes some doing as to how bad this football club and its demise in the, in the context of its time inside the AFL system becoming in 1987. I understand the queries around Adam Simpson. I look at the alternative, though, to take him out and to put a first-time coach in or even experienced coach in. They're not going to have any impact or effect in 2024. I can see why they've done it. And with Don Pike coming in with the fresh eyes off field, to me, Nat, he's just going to have a look at what goes on this season and probably reset for 2025. Just quickly on the dogs, Lloyd, any thoughts? Uh, well, they were belted by Melbourne and they were shown for where they were at in their first game. Then they've beaten the Gold Coast and the West Coast Eagles. So we can't really judge them just yet, but they played Geelong in Gather Round. So that'll be another good test for the Western Bulldogs. Well, the big story of the round continues to be the Brisbane. Lions last year's grand finalists 0 and 3 after losing to the Premier in Collingwood on Thursday night. And to add to the drama, Damo, there's this story about a US trip in the off season that seems to have divided some of the playing group. What is the latest on that? Well, that it all comes back to what percentage you place upon that being part of the overall Brisbane problem. Now, no one's going to be able to answer that question. The club itself is at pains to say it's got a zero percentage point. Now, it's clearly got some percentage points in the overall context of the, the 100%, Lord Owen. The communication's obviously relayed uh, through the partners of the players. There's been relationship uh, breakdowns, as we know. There's been teammates having strained relationships. The club itself today will speak about it. Harris Andrews, one of the captains, alongside Danny Daly, the, the head of football. They need to be really firm in how they present this publicly now because it is simmering and at, at a 0-3 start. Lotto, you always speak about needing to get everything right to, to have a proper crack at a flag mm. tilt and this is not getting it right, is it? No, no, that's right. And you need stability in your home life to play good football. For every one player that their life is a, not the best off field, that performs there's probably another 50 or 100 that I've seen in my time who can't perform when things aren't quite right in their home life, their relationships and things like that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with Damo. It, you can't say it's not having an effect on their form if this is what has been going on behind the scenes. Well, despite their winless start to the season, their coach Chris Fagan certainly isn't panicking. You know, make it sound like we're 0 and 13. We're 0 and 3, and there's 20 games to go. So, let's not, um, it's not a great start, but let's not catastrophize it's borderline catastrophe though mm. for a club that has made finals five years in a row has just missed a prelim final for each of those five years by a kick in two of the years to start zero three carlton Fremantle, and collingwood um their draw as we're about to have a look is is not all that favorable they've got a good game this week against uh, north melbourne in uh, adelaide as part of gather round but on what they've displayed to this point of this season you're not giving them a look in in those three they matches could be one and six like genuinely yeah look, they, they can turn it around yeah. i mean they've, they've got talent but uh on what they've seen they're not getting near those teams melbourne geelong and gws and it's five six and seven are either of you concerned that maybe their premiership window is in danger of you know, closing and they're in danger of missing it, I guess. Oh, yeah, I thought this was going to be their year. I loved what they did last year. I thought their final series was sensational. Grand final day, they were brilliant. You know, they yeah. could have gone their way as well. So it's so disappointing. Yeah, Brisbane, you know, they lose Lockie Neal last week. They're, they get smashed at the clearance. So yeah. I think they're, they're too much talent dependent, more than system dependent. Um, so that, that's what that's on Chris Fagan uh, moving forward now. Well, if they're going to get their season back on track, they're going to need to clean up a few things. Inside 50s is one of their concerns because they had 56 to the Pies, 43. And in fact, when you look at it, they've won the inside 50 count in all three of their games, but lost every single game. The connection, Lloydie, just doesn't seem to be there, or is it that the forwards aren't performing? Uh, well, when you get to around the 100 game mark, uh, the gap between your best and worst should be pretty small. And unfortunately for Eric Hipwood, he's, he's uh, bad games are really, really poor. So for Joey Danaher and Eric Hipwood, they get their hands to the ball so often in this game, but just drop them, you know? So they should be taking these marks, they're dropping them, uh, losing their feet. So I, I, I think another thing on selection, like why Darcy Fort played with Hipwood and Danaher is beyond me. That, that, was, that, that brought Collingwood's runners into the game like this, where it just streamed straight back out down the field. So he tried Darcy Gardner earlier. Darcy mm. Gardner's never going to make it as a forward. Then he's gone Fort once Gardner's gone injured. So I'd nearly go the other way and I'd definitely have Ford out of the team and I'd weigh up whether to drop Hipwood out of the team as well. And I'd go Danaher, surrounded by Rayner, Cameron, McCarthy, Bailey. And to me, that would be a pretty dynamic and scary forward line. 
not having those as two As much to make a statement yeah. as it is to remove a player out of Fort? Uh, well, Fort, I just wouldn't play generally. He's either a ruck or doesn't play. Hipwood. And Hipwood, yes. Um, I think at ground level, he, he's been a liability, not pressuring out of the forward line. Some tough calls yeah. there for Chris Fagan to make this week. From the misfiring lines to the sharp shooting Ds. And Melbourne were on song, Lloydie, when it came to their goal kicking on Saturday night against Port Adelaide. Ben Brown has started this season so well. And then you've got Gorn and Fritch also dead eyes in front of goal. I know it's a big focus at Melbourne and you think it's going to be a focus at every club but it's the way you teach it and Mark Williams is you know big on goal kicking and on the road uh, you silence the crowd uh, key moments like that Max Gorn one was huge this from Bailey Frisch didn't have his best night sealed the game trust him. Yeah. Uh, they've got big time players Melbourne you know big body big time players like Viney, Petrarca, Oliver, Gorn uh, you can just trust them May, Lever um, so that's why they're in it up to their eyeballs. Again. And then they've introduced to the mix a, a first-year player in Caleb yes. Windsor who uh, has had a seamless introduction to AFL footy and just looks at home, doesn't rack out the numbers. That will come with time, but he's at home in a very good team and, and setting up plays as we see. Yeah, you want to uh, you know, bring in what you lack, Matt, and I think he, he's what they lack. They've got the big, big bodies in, in all those midfielders, but you know, aside from probably Langdon, they're one short. And uh, here, here comes Caleb Windsor, who will play every game this year. And only 12 disposals, but he, he runs and carries. And, I love yeah. his confidence, too. Yes. He just mm. feels like mm. he's been playing at senior footy for a little bit longer yeah. than, what, the three or four games that he's already done so far. Now, we've spoken at length about the Demons' tumultuous last six uh, to 12 months. Again, they were in the spotlight uh, last week. So far, though, it does seem that all the external noise has just gone to further strengthen the bonds and the coach, Simon Goodwin, spoke about it post-match. That's been going on for three or four years. So, um, you know, one thing I know about this group is they're determined to play great footy. And, um, you know, we, uh, we just galvanise, we get to work, we work hard um, and we put on a really high performance. So um, I'm, I'm proud of the group, the way they're, they're going about their business. Damo, before the season started, I thought Melbourne could go two ways. Mm. It either pulls them apart and it divides a club or it galvanises them, backs against the wall and they come together and that looks like it's happening. Yeah, it does. And then they started the year with a, a pretty poor loss, it must be said, against Sydney Swans. But their response since that moment has been profound. Mm. And look, the, the Clayton Oliver story within the Melbourne Footy Club story, you can say what you like about them, you can have your views on them. I do think they still had cultural problems, mm. but I do know that they are going out of their way to rectify them. And I raised the Clayton Oliver situation, that in the, in the, in the confines of this story, they ask questions of themselves about Clayton Oliver the situation as much as Clayton Oliver. I think it's helped them obviously allow him to come back into footy in, in a very successful way, it must be said, given what he was being through. And they're all come along for the ride with it. They've improved themselves, they've, they've bettered themselves, and there is that word, the galvanising of what's going on. Let's move on to Saturday evening and what a night it was at Marvel Stadium. 44,000 people there to see Essendon hand the Saints their first loss of the season. And Lloydie, the Bombers threw everything they had at Ben Mackay, recruiting him across from North Melbourne. And it looks like maybe all the pieces of the puzzle are coming together. Yeah, I've never been sure about him, uh, but what he has bought is... Uh, you want some confidence, you know. In poor Brandon Zerk Thatcher, how many times has Tommy Hawkins kicked big bags on him? Jaden Laverty has had to play under size for so long. So you know, he was the best player in the market and he's performing super well over this first month for the Bombers. So uh, again, without him on the weekend, they wouldn't have won the game. Big tick from Lloydie, yeah. I like it. Now, it was a case of no Peter Wright, no worries, and enter the package in Jake Stringer, and he is our Crypto.com brave or bold play this week. His fourth quarter goal from outside 50 to put the Bombers in front. There was absolutely no way he was passing that <laughs> one off. And I like the fact, Damo, that he took ownership for no, it. No, I do too, Nat. And I think you can count on one hand the, probably the amount of players in the entire competition amongst the 850 of them who, who would have been able to do that at that point in time in that moment. And he never looked like in doubt, did he? No, he didn't. And uh, that's what he is. He's a confident player. Uh, and he had Callum Wilkie for a lot of the night, which was a fantastic duel. And that I was just there as a spectator. And the Saints' ball use absolutely killed them. I think mm. not having Max King, they lacked direction in the game. Uh, Cam and Edie kicked a couple of goals. But you know, if you look at some of these turnovers from St Kilda, they just didn't quite um, have the direction that they needed to. Some of these are in defence, so it happened all over the field. But both teams were poor by foot. I'll admit Essendon were just as bad. Uh, but... You know, some of these, unfortunately, Riley Bonner had too many on the on the night. Um, 17 which hurt them and, and they could just couldn't score. 
uh, and, and that gets quite deflating. And as a backman, they're exhausted. They're out on their feet by the end of the backs because the ball just kept coming back at them. So they're now one and two, St Kilda, and, and under a bit of pressure. Blues fans, though, they are up and about because they are three and zero to start the season. They have a chance at gather round to go four and zero, which they haven't done since 1995, and we all know what happened that year. They won the flag. Can they go all the way, Lloydie? Uh, I've got others in front of them now, but um, yeah, th there's no reason why they can't, Damo. And they've recruited Elijah Hollands to add to the midfield mix, and they just were brutal on North Melbourne. Uh, that's expected because mm. North are young, so they play Fremantle in gather round, but. Some of these names, so Paddy Cripps, George Hewitt, Matthew Kennedy, Elijah Hollands, Blake Akers, Adam Chera are all massive bodied midfielders, don't they? Yeah, just watching yeah. what you're highlighting here, Gordo, they just look a very different uh, crop of people yeah. compared with what North Melbourne is. Now, to your point, um, Richmond and North Melbourne are among their two of their three wins this year. They came from eight goals down, or seven goals down against uh, the Brisbane Lions in, in the first game. I like them. I think they're tracking well, but I think it's a bit premature to start that leading this to 95. <laughs> the lid is off. Well, Carlton, they face Frio in Gather Round, and Frio's the other side that's had a really hot start. They are 3 and 0, oh, and I think we all genuinely had concerns about the Dockers mm. after round one with their backline injuries. Brennan Cox going down, Oscar McDonald going down. They already had Heath Chapman's sideline, but Alex Pierce, Luke Ryan, Jordan Clark, they've been outstanding, and I feel like maybe we underrate Alex Pierce given that we live in Victoria, but he is in all Australian form in my view. Well, the, there's a different dynamic, isn't there, Lordo, to what they're doing this year. It's the same people, and those three people you mentioned, uh, Ryan obviously there with, uh, with Pierce and, and Jordan Clark, who gives them run, but they're playing differently. They've got a different licence, or at least they're playing with a, with a different mindset to what mm. they did last year. They were dour last year. Yeah. There was no creation of play from that inside the, the uh, defensive 50. There is this year, isn't there? I mean, Ryan's game was outstanding. Yeah, so to me, that's not their problem, though. It's down the other end. So uh, Amos looks a star, but yeah. he's still, you know, still youngish. Tracy's playing good football. So it's whether they can score enough throughout the year to whether they make the finals or not. And what about Hayden Young, Lloydy? Because there was some concern, I thought, that maybe with the backline injuries he might get moved back. But he is absolutely thriving in this midfield. Yeah, 32 disposals and he rarely ever wastes any. You know, 12 contested, 8 clearances. And along with Brayshaw, Sarong, Luke Jackson, that's a midfield group quartet uh, that you could have for the next 10 years. Uh, there is Amos kicking a goal. So often a lot of guys don't go from half back to the midfield and, and go that well. Look at Nick Dacos. He hasn't probably been, he's been good, but I think he more suits a half back line, whereas Hayden Young has started this season really well. And concerns for the Crows yeah. you know, in, a, in a major way, just four goals for the game. Their first goal came inside the first two minutes of the match, three only after that point. Uh, their worst performance, having already had two bad ones. Geelong wasn't great in their second game, and they were all at sea uh, for three quarters against Gold Coast first up. Massive game against Melbourne on Thursday night, and the Demons have set themselves for it uh, as a package of games. Port Adelaide last week, the Crows this week from, uh, from their thoughts. And, I just can't see them getting near Melbourne with what they've displayed at this point. Well, Matthew Nick says they're trying too hard. And as you said, Lloydy, it's 80% yeah. of the game is above the shoulders. They look like they're bereft of confidence at the moment. And not since, uh, I think, Matthew Nix's first season in 2020 have they started 0-3. Time now to check out the crypto.com tipping leaderboard. Are you sure you want to know? Which I don't know that we want to. Look, he's got a further lead on us. Flying. This is disgraceful. Yeah. And he's got a real strut about it too. I know. Like, yeah, the confidence yeah. in himself. So we've just got to look to peg one back a week now. He came in here today and wanted this to be like top of the yeah, rundown. Yeah. Like, let's start with this. There is one more. Did I? Did I? <laughs> <laughs> there is one more game, of course, to go to round out uh, this round of footy. Hawks and the Cats. Easter Monday. It's always a big game on the calendar, but today is extra special because it is the third annual Dare to Hope game, and that is the legacy left behind by the late Paul Deere Premiership player, of course, for Hawthorne, 1991. Norm Smith medalist, and his wife, Cherie, has been doing a phenomenal job with Dare to Hope, raising funds and awareness for pancreatic cancer research. Lloydie, I know, too, that this is one that is um, certainly cl close to your heart. Yeah, Nat, I lost my dad to pancreatic cancer a couple of years ago, um, and there was Michael Turner, Mickey Turner, yeah. who's also just had surgery for pancreatic cancer. It's the second biggest killer there is now. And um, unfortunately, if you get pancreatic cancer, uh, uh, your only cure is surgery. 
and 95% of cases is a secondary cancer and then it's incur incurable. So it's a horror disease. Uh, we've lived through it, but uh, thanks for your support. Yeah. No worries. Staretohope.com.au if you do want to donate, buy a purple scarf. It's going to be uh, a great scene at the MCG today. Quick tips on that game, Lloydie. Uh, yeah, the cats. Cats. You be going horse racing? No, nah, cats. <laughs> uh, that is all we have time for on Access All Areas this week. Thank you so much for joining us. But before we say goodbye, here is a little taste of Crypto.com's Born Brave series featuring Premiership player Mason Cox. He uh, talks about his trials and tribulations and the journey so far. So check that out and we'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. Journey through the AFL in simple terms is probably a roller coaster. It is the most physical, most demanding, and probably the hardest contact sport there is in the world. I've lost track of how many surgeries I've actually had now. In a game versus the Gold Coast Suns, uh, I was in a contest and someone ripped out half my retina of my eye. It's the scariest moment of my life to sit there and lose a sense that you've taken for granted your whole life and to not really know exactly how it was going to turn out. It was a real uphill battle. In 2021, I didn't think I was going to get another contract. I didn't know if any other club would be interested, and I was at probably the end of my rope mentally. I was pretty ready to retire.